श्रुति स्मृति पुराणा आल करुणाल नमा भगवत्द शंकर लोकशंक शंकर शंकराचार्य केशव बादरायण सूत्र भाष्य वंदे भगवत पुनः पुनः ईश्वरो गुरुरात्मे मूर्ति भेद विभागिने व्योम व्यादेहाय दक्षिणामूर्त नम सदा शिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्यपर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा ओ सहना सहनौ भुनक्त सह वीर करवाह तेजस्वी नवधीतमस्तु मिद्विषा वह ओ शाति 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 ओ पार्थाय प्रतिबोधिता भगवता नारायणेन स्वयं व्यासेन ग्रथिता पुराण मुनिना मध्ये महाभारत अद्वैतामृतवर्षिणी भगवती अष्टादशाध्यायी अंबत्वासंदा भगवदगीते भगवदेशिनी यं ब्रह्म वरुणेन्द्रुद्रमुता <coughs> स्तुन्वि दिव्यस्तव वेद सांगपदक्रमोपनिषद गायती यं साम ध्यानवस्थित तदेन मनसा पश्य यं योगिन यन्न विदुस्सुरा सुरगण देवाय तस्म नम देवाय तस्म नम सुकन्या so we will chant from uh, 19 onwards 19 ya enam veti hantaram ya enam veti hantaram यस्चैनम मन्यते हतम यस्चैनम मन्यते हतम उभौ तौ न विजानीतः उभौ तौ न विजानीतः नायम हन्ति न हन्यते नायम हन्ति न हन्यते न जायते मृयते वा कदाचित् न जायते मृयते वा कदाचित् नायम भूत्वा भविता वा न भूयः नायम भूत्वा भविता वा न भूयः अजो नित्य शाश्वतो यम पुराणः अजो नित्य शाश्वतो यम पुराणः न हन्यते हन्यमाने शरीरे न हन्यते हन्यमाने शरीरे वेदा विनाशिनम नित्यम वेदा विनाशिनम नित्यम 
So I'll unmute a couple of you, Mohini, Dr. Ramesh. So if there's no noise in your uh, area, just stay unmuted. <clears throat> yeah, I think. So we were in the, in this uh, 21st shloka. Veda vinashinam nityam ya ena majam avyayam katham sa purusha partha kam ghatayati hantikam. This is the shloka where Bhagavan Sri Krishna is concluding the ideas presented in verses 19 and 20, previous two shlokas. So that's why we are seeing some same words like ajaha, nityaha, uh, etc. Avinashi, all these words are uh, have appeared in the previous shlokas. So last time we said Bhagavan Bhashikara spent a good bit of time on the shloka because of the importance of, of this shloka. And so he talked a little bit about Karma Sanyasi versus Sarva Karma Sanyasi. And why that Vidvatta, Vidvatta means that the state of knowing something, knowing this Atma Vidya. That person is a Vidwan and that person is a Sarva Karma Sanyasi. Actions can never be given up. Nobody can give up actions. You can say, I'm sitting doing nothing. I'm sitting doing nothing for a long time. You can say, I've done nothing in the last two months during this lockdown. You can say all that. So those are all okay. But we've been doing something or the other. Literally, if you look at action, action is something we, the human being is, has to be performing an action, but the, sometimes the free will may not be there. So like breathing is happening. You don't say I am breathing. Unless you're doing pranayama or something, then there is a deliberate effort to breathe in a particular way. Then there is free will. There is, there is free will in water. But in general, action cannot be Nobody can be free from action. So therefore, we saw last time that Sarva Karma Sanyasi or Sanyasa means action completely given up and the only way one can give up action is the way one gives up the idea of sun revolving around the earth and that is by knowledge. Okay, This is what we learned last time. So we were talking little about the questions somebody was asking a Purva Pakshi, challenging. And uh, one of the questions he's going to ask is that Shankara brings out is that uh, this Atma cannot be known. Krishna said Aprameya. So he uses that as an excuse and says, yeah, Aprameya means something cannot be known. And so Atma cannot be known. And this study is a waste. This is a, an argument that is made. And so to that, Shankara says that Atma can never be known like we know everything else in this world. Atma cannot be known like I know Anatma. Everything I know is Anatma. It's an object of my sense organs. It's an object of my mind. If not sense organs, my mind. I thought I remembered my past. Suppose I say, I remembered the days when I went to school. Suppose I say, then now I have the idea of my, my school and my teachers in my mind, but I don't see them. My sense organs are not being used, but it's a memory from the past. All that is possible and it is all objectified. They're all an object of my perception. So Shankara says, 
these are all objects of your perception and atma yes cannot become an object of your perception correct but he says the ignorance about atma can go and will go this is the point he is making there and so when we say we know atma we we say the ignorance about atma which is there currently because i make a mistake about myself i have made a mistake about myself and i have taken myself to be as good as this body and while i know now very well that this body is also an object of my knowledge this body is an atma and therefore that ignorance about atma can go will go this is what shankara is saying to that purva pakshi and so there is a technical discussion about the teaching taking place and then this uh, aham akarta iti vrittihi i am a non doer that that knowledge takes place and then the agnana nivritti takes place namely the removal of the ignorance of atma takes place and the vritti does its job and it goes away and then gnanam gnana prapti so like that there is a discussion we don't have to dwell too much on that now that's the that's how the shastram presents this particular knowledge and so then the shankara says hey if you say knowledge of atma is not possible are you saying it is not possible for you for me i can i it's not possible if you say then shankara says ah okay that's a different problem so you're accepting that knowledge of atma is possible but for me it is not possible if you say then shankara brings in this idea this thing about yes the mind has to be prepared we talked about adhikaritvam last class the mind has to be prepared to know and that is why there is there is there is karma yoga so the shraddha in the shastram brings in karma yoga means brings in this attitude we have not talked much about it so how do i lead my life so that i can gain that preparedness gain the ability to grasp what is being said so karma yoga is there shraddha is there so the entire shastram now comes and becomes meaningful and so shankara connects connects this brahma vidya to myself the adhikari and brings in adhikaritvam and then to gain that adhikaritvam he says karma yoga is there bhakti yoga all these things have a place <clears throat> so here because because knowledge is being talked about what the shastram is saying atma akarta atma is a non doer atma ajaha atma yeah so ramesh ji whoever is talking can minimize <clears throat> so that atma akarta non doer knowing that it's a fact to be known and then so there is something called negation negation we talked about earlier now again we are reviewing it we don't normally use that word in our daily you know life you know life in our life i could have said but i had i said daily life as though daily life is different from life you know there is some non daily life and then there is daily life you know such thing like that in our life i think i should have just said life daily life means how can you know people ask this question how can i use bhagavad gita in my daily life correct the popular question bhagavad gita is all very good nice teachings but in my daily life i want to use it okay that means i want to i want to be with the teachings on a daily basis that is a meant that is a meaning okay so here the shastram says shastram is not making a promise not making a promise promise you know what is promise 
Promise means, suppose Shastram says there is, there is Shiva Loka. So if you worship Shiva, after death you will go to Shiva Loka. Okay? Now that is a promise. Correct? Why it is a promise? Because Shiva Loka, we believe in it. Because there is no reason not to believe in it. Nobody has seen it. Nobody has seen it and come back and told us, yes, yes, Shiva Loka is good. And Narada comes there also. Once a week he comes there and he gives pravachan and he entertains all of us. Uh, like this, we don't hear all these things. So, but we believe in it. We believe in it. And uh, now, so that's a promise is being held. That after death, this will happen, that will happen. This is all a promise. But here, Atma Vidya, there's no promise. A statement is being made. Atma Purnaha, Atma Achaha, Atma Avyayaha, Atma Nityam, you are eternal, you, there is no death for you. This is a statement being made. Shastram doesn't say, please believe me. Please believe me that there is no death for you. You are Amartyaha. Shastram doesn't say, you believe me. Shastram simply says, you are Amartyaha. Then it walks away. It walks away, leaving us too. Follow what else it says. And Upanishads come like that. So, not a promise made. And so, that point, it's important to remember. We have to differentiate, right? As we study and hear Shastram, Bhagavata Purana and so many things we have. And so, we have to clearly understand what is a belief, what is not a belief. This must be clear. What is a belief can be believed, need not be believed. What is knowledge, what is supposed to be understood, what is knowledge must be understood. And until it is understood, yeah, sure, I can believe in it. So I can believe the Shastram. When it says Atma, Ajaha, Nitya, etc., I can believe it. But I don't stop with belief. I have to understand it. Good. So, so the problem is there. Wait a minute. I am a doer. I am a karta. All of us know we are a karta. And now Shastram says, I am a karta. You are a karta, it says. How is it possible? So this is where we talk about negation. Negation. Two types of negation are there. So one is our favorite pot. So our pot is there and I the, the pot is in my parents' home. I don't have it here. So, <laughs> so you know, I feel a little empty-handed, you know, without that beautiful pot. So the pot, you have to now imagine. And uh, the pot came into being. Pot is not ajaha. Pot is not unborn. It is jaha. And so it, it, it is born. And then it changes all the time. And then at some point, the pot is broken. Pot doesn't exist. So when the pot is broken, we say the pot is negated. The pot is negated. Means it is not what it used to be. Pot is not what it used to be. So pot is negated. Doesn't exist anymore. Not only that. Even when the pot is still there in your hand, still it is negated. How is it negated? Well, this part is not what it used to be yesterday. It is now one day old. So it is not the same part. So that part, yesterday's part stands negated. Today's part will stand negated later. Like this, this is all negation. So physical negation, you've got a physical negation where we say the part is broken. Where you saw a tree and now the tree is all not there and there is a lot of wood. So tree is negated, then wood is negated. Because that object is not there. Physical negation. With your eyes you can see, I don't see a tree. So there used to be a huge tree outside our street. And it must have been some 200-300 years old. So after the lockdown I come and see and there is just Akasha. There is an empty space. And uh, so it hurts us, you know, when these things happen. 
huge tree and you can't you, if you stand in front of the tree the tree is going huge you can't there's no question of hugging the tree you can just you can cover you know one eighth of the circumference of the tree if you cover hug it like this so tree is gone tree is negated physical negation now when krishna says atma is akarta what is there is also a negation that is taking place the first negation of the tree of the pot is what is called nisheda physical negation in sanskrit is called nisheda nisheda and then now we go to which is where you don't have to destroy the kata the what remains is akarta no not like that no physical destruction possible this there is a negation negating what i used to think that atma is karta i am a doer etc and that statement that shastram says that is a false that's a false statement so false statement means what so exactly like our famous example of this sun rising and all along people thought that the sun was rising the sun is moving the sun is revolving around the earth and of course the earth must be the most important planet because we the great human beings are there like that people thought and so then scientists had to come and tell us that uh, if they had listened to our vedas by vedikas at least we would have given them some ideas so thousands of years ago we would have said no the sun does not revolve around the earth but anyway so finally this knowledge takes place scientifically we know that the earth is the one that revolves around the sun but not the other way now this kind of knowledge when it takes place what happens is this a negation is happening a negation of what a negation of what i used to think was true i used to think something else i used to think the sun was going round and round the earth every day lagatar just keeps on going but now the science comes and says the sun doesn't even move an inch and we are the ones going round and round and they tell you this is the ellipse and all that all these ideas rotation and all that is there and so now there is the knowledge of the solar system is at least for all practical purposes is complete and so none of us when the person who has this knowledge will never say that the sun revolves around the earth never in fact even as you see the sunrise what is the knowledge in the mind you don't get fooled by the perception of sunrise the knowledge of sunrise the knowledge that the earth revolves around the sun does not negate the perception of the sunrise please make a note the knowledge of the solar system and the movement planetary movement does not negate the perception perception continues to be there the same perception happens and you can get up and you can say namaste you can welcome the sun as it rises you have no problem with that even though you know very well the sun does not rise so my knowledge of atma as akarta belongs in this category of negation there is nothing destroyed there is nothing changed physically nothing happens perception wise no change perception means i am saying sense perception but then cognitively look at this word cognition cognitively i am completely changed because my view of the world is now completely different and my view of the earth and the sun and the solar system is completely different and my knowledge is so clear so crystal clear that nobody can nobody can shake that knowledge that's how and even when i am in school i got this knowledge so no question 
and one becomes an adult etc that knowledge is crystal clear so this is so this knowledge negates my previously misunderstood or believed so called fact and what i used to think was true is proved wrong this is the category that this atma vidya comes under and this negation is called badha badha previously what was that physical negation called it was called nishedha nishedha this is called badha and badha this word badha is there in our i mean in tamil we i don't normally use it i have not heard it but in telugu it is there they say emiti badha like that this emiti badha so those days uh, is the telugu movies we used to watch you know as kids and uh, all these movies they they talk so these dialogues come to my mind now so suri kantham and all that emiti badha like that sigledu like that they will she will say all that, all that is coming what is your problem empty bada means what's your problem what's your problem what are you suffering from <laughs> that's the idea i suppose and uh, so that not that bada here maybe there is a connection because after all all these words uh, have the you know come from sanskrit and they have many meanings and similar meanings and so forth so here negation is what we are looking for called bada bada so the shastram does a badha of what of my of the error i have committed leaving me with clear knowledge okay so just some some ideas we all need to be clear about so similar examples we can we can give there are many examples in our own so you look at this you look at the rainbow there's a rainbow out there and we all go out and see the rainbow now the child takes it literally there is a rainbow out there and uh, but then the adult knows very well the one who is educated knows very well there is really you can't go there is no object which looks like this you can't hang your clothes on this rainbow you can't do a pull ups on this rainbow because there is really no such thing called a rainbow just some some refraction reflection whatever happens and uh, so by knowledge of physics we know that just the sun rays just reflect in such a way that we are we are seeing this pattern perception seeing the pattern there is really no object peacock beautiful peacock's feathers are there and then it looks very colorful violet and red and you see all these colors really speaking if you go close by you can't see any of these colors you can't see any of these colors because there must be something there there must be some structure prism like structures uh the feathers maybe you know they are so the structure is like that fine hair whatever is there and somehow when you look from the outside it looks very beautiful okay so these are all these are all in our own life we can see what we see is not what the reality is and we enjoy it also no problem doesn't say don't enjoy it because there are no no rainbow real rainbow you should not enjoy it no we don't say all that no, you just enjoy it it is a ishvara shrishti this is all example of what badha badha so this entire science is badha every time you the study of science is a, is a knowledge of badha constantly badha how is that so water is there water then you study its water molecule then you study its atoms then you study its protons neutrons all bada you are negating the negating so called water and then you are saying it's all molecules then you are negating the molecules then you are saying it's all atoms then you are negating atoms so even a doctor knows this so blood for the doctor is not simply blood so every doctor looks at it differently what is hemoglobin level what is the creatinine level what is the sugar level what is the lipid profile get the lipid profile done lipid profile so amazing these days the amount of tests they do it what used to be incurable those days these days they can just find out like that 
what amazing is just i am so amazed by that absolutely amazing and then we can take corrective actions based on that so it's 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 bada is always possible any time that is why science grows there nobody can say we have studied everything that is to be studied no the more you study the more you understand that there is lot more to be studied lot more to be known lot more that is unknown so bada constantly bada is being done there so so bada so bada means cognitive negation cognitively you say that is the mind knows that is not true but we will enjoy it so that is why here is a you know physicist particle physicist the advanced and doing great research in particle accelerator and all that he is doing uh, you know in cern in switzerland is doing all this then uh, comes his you know marriage day so he has to gift something to his wife you know so he gives the wife a, you know a copper ring copper ring you know just a few dollars the wife is furious what what is this it's a copper ring my dear copper ring what is this i thought you will give me something big and you are giving me a copper ring yeah what is the point what do what what do you want i thought you will give me something some jewelry will come a golden ring with diamond at least if not diamond studded some golden ring i thought you will give me come on what is this gold is also atoms and same atoms copper also same atom there is really no difference don't you know this you 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 been living with me for so long i have been doing research on this this kind of argument <laughs> this kind of argument doesn't happen fortunately why because the physicist even though he or she knows so much respects the reality and knows knows enough knows more than what he knows that you know even though in his mind everything is just a bunch of quarks and atoms and you know there's just a question of is it energy or is it a wave is it a particle or is it a wave this is a question they are debating and uh, so i don't want to burden my wife with all these ideas and let's just enjoy the birthday party and uh, give her a golden ring if you want so so there so the idea is there even though the knowledge is there negation constantly happens bada happens but you still can go with the flow and uh, so that example the swami ji gives this example which is swami ji so therefore enjoy the sunrise that is the point here don't say oh there sun doesn't rise therefore i should not look at sunrise therefore i should not get the thought of sunrise oh that's not good no it's not it's you don't have to say all that you enjoy the sunrise you do whatever you have to do during sunrise and our vaidika dharma has so much to offer and we enjoy all that all that is done for our own antakarana shuddhi remember that later on we'll come to that antakarana shuddhi okay so this is important because when some people come to study vedanta this i find quite often and they are told atma is akarta they are told everything is mithya they are told the body is mithya and they begin to understand all this then what happens then they start they start living in denial body is mithya so therefore disease is there some serious problem is there problem doesn't exist problem is mithya problem is mithya is okay problem doesn't exist is a problem is a problem for the family this fellow has supposed to see the doctor 
He says, problem is Mithya. And so, like this, they are completely zoned out. Zoned out means what? They are, they are oblivious to realities. When there are things you have to do, this guy doesn't do at all. Because the idea, everything is Maya. Don't believe all these things. Don't believe. Hey, there is a serious problem in the body. Migraine headaches you are getting. Every five days, you got to go deal with it. So, so this kind of impracticality sometimes we see in people who don't understand it properly. So that's why we have to we have to make it clear that uh, that the negation does not does not mean there is in the empirical world in the transactional world you know there is a body yes I am not the body but the body is me but I am responsible for the body and so we are not bringing about any denial of anything. Denial is, cannot happen. In fact, a proper a Vedanti, this will be a very practical person. Very practical person. Because that person is not, not constrained by things that others are. So it becomes very practical. So we can keep that in mind. And so, so here, the Shankara brings a point. He says, what about this person, the person who comes to know about Atma and is very clear about it? That person has nothing more to be done. There is this, there is this idea. Nothing to be done. Means what? All life long I have been doing things to become secure and become secure again, become secure again, become happy. Now I am unhappy, then I become happy. This is how the entire life is. But once Atma is properly understood. Then Krishna Karma Krit, like that, some words, Krita Kritya, etc. The Shastram uses these words and says that person is has done what is to be done and accomplished what is to be accomplished. So that uh, that idea is there and that comes from this fact that Atma is Purnaha, Atma is Akarta, Atma is Akarta, therefore. Uh, Therefore, then nothing needs to be done because what is I am complete. Therefore, what else is there to be done? There is nothing to be done from which I am going to gain something. So that idea is there. Krishna Karma Krit. Okay. And so this completes our understanding of this sloka Veda Vinashinam Nityam Yayena Majam Abhyayam. So let's go and translate the shloka. <clears throat> so the verb here in the shloka is what? Veda. 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 Shankara reminds us it is Vijanati. One who knows. One who knows. And we have to do that because otherwise Veda will be uh, you. It becomes you know. And he, can, can, he changes that to the one who knows. Okay, because yaha, the word yaha is there. Yaha means the one who. So, yaha yenam avinashinam veda. Look at that. Yaha yenam avinashinam veda. The one who knows this, enam means this. This means what? This atma, which is a topic of discussion. The one who knows this Atma to be indestructible, Avinashinam Veda, Kama, Nityam, timeless, not subject to time, Kama, Ajam. So that word Enam Ajam Abhyayam has to be split as Enam, Ajam, and Avyayam. So Ajam, unborn, Kama, Avyayam, not subject to decline. <clears throat> Kama Katam Saha Purushaha Hey Partha, O Arjuna Katam Saha Purushaha How does that person Hanti kill or Ghatayati cause to kill? Or, and how does that person or whom does that person come? The last word is come. The come has to come, go with Hanti, come Hanti. And come will go with Ghatayati. 
cause to kill. Whom does that person kill? Whom does that person make or cause to kill? Means making somebody do the action of killing. So how and whom does that person kill? Whom does he cause to kill? That is the translation of the shloka. Okay. Good. So we will uh, chant the next shloka. So let's see who else. Uh, anybody who? Yeah, Shailaja. If you are still there. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. We can, I think we can hear you. Okay. So verse number 22. Vasam Sijirnani. Vasam Sijirnani. Yatha Vihaya. Yata vihaya Navani Grihnati Navani Grihnati Naroparani Naroparani Tatha Shari Rani Tatha Shari Rani Vihaya Jirnani Vihaya Jirnani Anyani Samyati Anyani Samyati Navani Dehi Navani Dehi Vasam Sijirnani Yatha Vihaya Vasani Jirnani Yata Vihaya Vasam Si Jirnani Yata Vihaya Vasam Si Jirnani Yata Vihaya Navani Grinati Naroparani Navani Grinati Naroparani Tatha Shari Rani Vihaya Jirnani Tatha Shari Rani Vihaya Jirnani Anyani Samyati Navani Dehi Anyani Samyati Navani Dehi Yeah. So still able to hear me, all of you? Yes. Yeah. Good. Okay. <clears throat> so some some of the videos here are seem to be frozen. Yeah, how is it now? Good. Okay. <clears throat> so, too many anis in the shloka. Jirnani, Navani, Naroparani, Sharirani, Jirnani, Anyani, Navani. <laughs> so, Sanskrit students will quickly grasp it. Patram, Patre, Patrani. Pushpam, Pushpe, Pushpani. So, so it's just a plural. Bahuvajan, plural. Ani comes means you can guess. It's a plural form of some noun. That is how it works. Generally. Okay. So this is a this is a shloka that is giving a simile. That is giving a metaphor. And I'll tell you the gist. Very easy to understand. A person, any of us wears clothes every day. 
and wears clothes and when these clothes of course we change clothes every day and then when we when the clothes become old when the clothes become not wearable anymore they don't perform the function they are meant to perform then what do we do the person gives up the clothes gives up it's gone i it doesn't serve me anymore and then takes on another set of new clothes this is the example set of new clothes this idea this example is there and then when that set of clothes become old jeernani jeernam in sanskrit means old so jeernam in any of our languages means digested also so it's as though these clothes get digested means they are no longer in the one piece great piece that was before so that person takes on new clothes just like that example just like the person wears new clothes krishna is saying there is a dehi now we know who a dehi is who a shuva sharire is here the word dehi is that the last word of the shloka is dehi the dehi the indweller of this body the jiva also does the same thing like you throw away clothes after they are not useful the day he throws away the bodies the day he keeps wearing new bodies like this day he is now wearing this body and after some time the the body doesn't function doesn't serve anymore the day he gives up this body and takes on another body this is the example this is the statement krishna has made so if we can visualize the example of a person wearing clothes then we can easily visualize the the, the fact about the day he giving up bodies and taking on new bodies so this is how our idea of punarjanma and all comes from from upanishads and then from vakyas like this okay now a recap so two words are there sharira you can see the word sharira there and then you can see the word dehi deha is also there so and then uh, there is the word nara so sharira and deha you know shirya mana swabhavah sharira so that which has the quality of declining disintegrating is called sharira and then deha also we know dahyate iti deha that which is worthy of being burnt which is capable of being burnt is called deha this is the literal meaning of the words so identical meanings for our purposes there is also the word narah so the the the, the second word from the last in the first line naroparani that is that is the way you split it is naraha aparani you split it like that it becomes naroparani <clears throat> two words really speaking there naraha aparani <clears throat> so naraha so naraha also we've seen nariyate iti naraha that which never gets destroyed is called naraha naraha literally means what human being a person is called naraha person human being is called naraha and the literal meaning of naraha is what one who never dies away is called naraha can you believe that this is what vedanta does to us it just helps us understand all these sanskrit words and then this whole vedanta just comes alive that person is called naraha not normally what we think of as a human being which culture tells you that naraha calls a person as somebody who can never be destroyed no you can't have you can look at any non indian language only native languages can have these possibilities native languages i say because native people have been eliminated and replaced by all these so called neo people and uh, so we have to look for these native languages and then identify these words will definitely be there guaranteed
So, so this Naraha is referred to as one who never dies, never dies away. Okay, just some notes we are making here. Now, come back to the shloka. Uh, the word yatha is there. Yatha also is there. Yatha means just as. Just as. So that is where we can we can we can infer that there is an example. Just as when somebody says an example is being given. Okay. So just as your just as your son works so hard and he gets up in the morning at four o'clock and begins to do his work and practice music and then goes to school and then comes back and then does his homework and even goes to play, etc. And just like your son is so working so hard, like that our Prime Minister also does. So just as example, this is just an example. So yatha, and then the, the corresponding word is also there, tatha. The first word in the second line, tatha. Tatha means so also. So you can split the shloka clearly into two halves. One where etha is given, the example is given. The other where what is primarily meant to be conveyed is said. Okay. So, this body getting jirna, getting declining. So we can understand the natural declining process, the aging process. And we appreciate that. And after some point when the when the body ages to, you know, body, the human body can live for 100 years perhaps. So 90 plus years it can live. And after that, it, it gets old enough that the parts of the body no longer can contain this jiva, no longer can function properly in order to contain the jiva. And so the body is gone, given up. Okay, this we can understand. <clears throat> disease, sometimes, sometimes disease can also uh, damage the body. A disease which you have no control over damage the body and the and, and and death happens the body is given up all these things we are aware of now <clears throat> the question can be asked that we can understand but then what about so things like accidents also happen not disease, not natural aging process, but an accident. And uh, so a bullet wound is there, a wound, knife wound is there. And then the body is punctured and no longer able to function. And we try the, our best to make it function, but it's not able to function. So then the deha is given up by the dehi. Okay, these are all various ways in which the deha gives up the dehi. It's frozen. So, so the so here, the Krishna is saying that they he gives up the body. Look at that. He's saying they he sharirani vihaya. Second line I'm looking at. They he sharirani vihaya. Jirnani sharirani vihaya. They he gives up the the old bodies. Okay, and then Anyani Samyati Navani. Navani means new. Anyani other Samyati takes on. This day he takes on other new bodies. As though this day he is the one that is that is deciding to leave this body. But we it is we is, we, is, we, we have rarely met anybody. Who, say, who says, you know, I want to give up this body. You know, it's kind of boring. I'm done. I've seen everything uh, that is to be seen. You know, in America, they say, they have a phrase, been there, done that. Been there, done that. Means what? Come on. There's nothing I've not seen. And there's nothing I've not done. 
it's all plain vanilla life i'm leading you know it's all so been there done that means what are you ready to leave are you ready to say goodbye and hand over your the reins to other people no uh, fellow does is not ready to do all that simply says been there done that <clears throat> so we don't meet anybody who says i want to give up my body and krishna says this day he is the one who gives up these bodies <laughs> i'm 90 years old i'm not ready to give up my body and uh, what are you saying what are you telling krishna so that question is there so we have to answer that question now it's uh, 7:31 so we will address that in the next class uh, what does krishna mean by that statement the day he is is the one who takes on new bodies gives up existing body takes on new bodies so it's a it's a nice shloka which uh, which gives us a metaphor to appreciate this uh, this idea of punar jarma this idea of the dehi dehi being permanent but the deha not being permanent so vedanta we are not so interested in punar jarma remember that punar jarma is there we believe in it very much but vedanta says says the nityatvam of the dehi that is what it is interested in and uh, and when when it says that when that fact is appreciated then there is no more punar janma also so vedanta actually negates punar janma correct so we will see all that later so we completed today verse number 21 and we entered this uh, shloka verse number 22 which which is giving us an example which is giving the example of us the human being taking on new clothes giving up old clothes and taking on new clothes and likewise similarly the dehi the jiva gives up bodies and takes on new bodies gives up old incapable bodies and takes on new bodies so we'll conclude with that om swasti prajabhya paripalayantam मार्गेण महीं महिषा गोभ्रमणेभ्य शुभमस्तु निोकास्मस्ता सुखिनो काले वर्षतु पर्जन्य पृथ्वी सस्यशालिनी देशो यं क्षोभरहिता सुखिन सर्वे सन्तु निरामया सर्वे भद्राणि पश्यन्तु मा कश्चित् दुःख भाग भवेत् असतो मा सद्गमय तमसो मा ज्योतिर्गमय मृत्योर्मा अमृतंगमय ओम पूर्णमद पूर्णमिदं पूर्णात् पूर्णमुदच्यते पूर्णस्य पूर्णमादाय पूर्णमेवापशिष्य शाति 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 हरि ओं श्रीगुरभ्यो नम हरि ओं